So happy Monday and welcome back to The Average Fisherman, everybody. We are currently waiting out for some rain that looks like it could happen at any minute now. And I think we're finally done with like the 105, 106 degree temperatures. The record, I think back in 1912 for today was 100. So historically speaking, I think that means that we're out of like, you know, the 105, 106, 107 degree temps. Um, it is currently 96 degrees outside. So, you know, not that big of a difference, but it is 10 degrees cooler. And I think at this point in a year, we can start looking for these daily temps to kind of start gradually falling. Uh, went to a couple sporting goods stores today just to get out the house for a little bit before the rain started. And I did notice like the maple trees and the sycamore trees and stuff like that, the leaves are starting to turn. So, you know, the daylight hours are getting noticeably shorter, especially in the mornings, you know, and, and fall is on the way. So when I see stuff like that, right, and you guys can blame Louisiana Blackwater fly fishing for this because he started me with a, with a text early this morning talking about squirrel hunting and I was just like, oh, oh my God. So I looked in the calendar and this year's squirrel season start actually starts late. Um, it always starts in Louisiana on the first weekend in October. So the first weekend technically is October 1st, which is a Sunday, but they don't ever start it on a Sunday. It starts on a Saturday. So the first day of squirrel or small game season, I should say, in Louisiana this year is actually October 7th, which is as late as it can get um, as far as the opening weekend of small game season. And as everybody who knows me knows, small game season is where it's at for me. I've said it many times on this channel that um, as big and huge into fishing as I am, I get more excited about small game season than I do even bass fishing because that's my heritage. That's where I grew up, you know, and things like that. So, you know, I, I it's just one of those things that, that really, really, I, you know, the first cold front, the first, like, decent cold front usually comes around at the end of September here. And, you know, it's not really like what I would call a cold front. It knocks the temperatures like from the mid 80s into like the mid 70s or something, but it's a noticeable drop. And usually with that first cold front, man, there's just something inside of me, you know, that gets that, that I, it's an indescribable feeling, this, this itchy kind of nervous energy that I get inside of me that, that signals here comes hunting season. You know, and, and it really, my grandpa used to say that it sets your blood on fire, <laughs> you know, and it's true. That's, it really does. Like I, I get that excited and that level of anticipation for the start of squirrel season. I just, it's incomparable to me to anything else. So I decided with that in mind, thanks to Louisiana Blackwater fly fishing for starting me on this, this, uh, like long tirade about what it's like to go squirrel hunting and, and getting me to start it with the, the squirrel hunting itch, I decided I would do uh, my first episode dealing with hunting on probably what I consider to be my most important piece of equipment. Now, I'm not talking about firearms or the ammunition, okay? Um, I'm as, as picky as I am when it comes to bass fishing lures and equipment, stuff like that, I am 10 times more picky when it comes to my hunting equipment, okay? Um, mostly for a lot, well, there's a lot of reasons, but a lot of it has to do with ethics and performance. And I've spent years and years and years of my life. At this point, I went on my first squirrel hunt with my dad when I was six years old. I'm 47. I have been hunting every year of my life for 41 years. And, you know, this is this is my whole year revolves around hunting season, preferably small game, because that's what I consider to be the most fun. Do I, do I hunt deer and stuff like that? Yes. But the thing that I look forward to the most, far and away, even more so than deer hunting, which a lot of people seem to go crazy about, they, they just, they live to go deer hunting. And if that's your thing, really happy for you. Like I'm not knocking deer hunting or anything like that. I, I've been, I've shot many deer in my life and you know it's a good experience but nothing to me is more fun than squirrel and rabbit hunting period okay that is the singular activity on earth that the day that i can't do it anymore i will genuinely feel like my life is is really not worth living anymore the day that i can't make it out to go squirrel or rabbit hunting is 
you know, it's going to be a sad day for me. So that being said, aside from all that stuff, the, the firearms, you know, the ammunition choices and stuff like that, the one piece of equipment, and my wife will back me up on this, that I can spend years, and I do mean this, years trying to find the perfect one of is a field vest or a shell vest. One of these, okay? This I am, I consider to be critical, a critical component to my success hunting, okay? This is one that my wife found. I don't know how the hell she found this because this is what I consider to be probably the most perfect shell vest I've ever had in my life. It's a brand called Trail Crest. Okay, and let me show you the label here so you guys can see it. It's in my favorite universal pattern. Okay, this is uh, Mossy Oak Country. Okay, and let me make sure I'm not lying to y'all about the color. It, it eventually has it written on here somewhere, and I probably should have looked at this before the video so I don't look like an idiot while I'm doing it. Yeah, Mossy Oak Country. Okay, Mossy Oak Breakup Country. I like this pattern for early and kind of mid season. I use a more of a brown based pattern. This has a lot of green in it for earlier season. But let's face it, with a shell vest and stuff like that, you're wearing it usually under a jacket or something like that. So that's not really that critical to me. I do like Mossy Oak Breakup Country a lot though. So this is the one component that I cannot go hunting without. Without, obviously without the firearms and ammo, but of all the pieces of clothing that I wear, this is the one that I consider to be the most critical, is a good shell vest. Now, why do I say this? You know, a lot of field shooters and stuff, dove hunters and stuff like that, wear the little fanny pack styles and stuff like that, and I've never been a fan of that, especially for um, still hunting, because my preferred method of hunting is still hunting. I don't go and sit and take a stand or anything like that and just wait for the animals to come to me. I stalk through the woods and spot the game that I go after, squirrels and rabbits, and then the game becomes a, a game of skill, which is why I like this, this method of hunting so, so much. Because, you know, squirrels and rabbits, they're very wary animals. They're prey animals. So they're super aware of everything that goes on around them. And you can spot one of them from 75 or 80 yards away. And then the game becomes getting close enough to get that shot, to get that animal, okay? Um, and uh, consider the game vest, that's what most people refer to these as, a faint game vest or a field vest. My grandpa and my dad always called them shell vests because you have your shotgun shells here, right? That's what these black things are for storage of shotgun shells. And there's more inside these big pockets here inside these big pockets there's another row of black shell holders there so why do i like these so much as compared to like what most people use when they go dove hunting or, or pheasant hunting and stuff like that and have the fanny pack style well for multiple reasons okay these shell vests usually have multiple pockets in order to keep equipment on and stuff like that they have some nice shoulder padding and things like that but it's super thin and they're lightweight i keep you know here's some pockets here even for phones and stuff like that. But I like them because it keeps shooting convenient for me. It's really easy to make a shot, reach down, pull out a shell, put it in your gun, as opposed to having to dig around in a fanny pack, right? So it almost becomes like second nature to you that when you shoot, you reach down, you grab one of these shells out of these easy to reach pockets, these little shell holders, feed it into your gun, and the reload is really super quick that way. Um, which is the primary reason why I like shell vests. It's, it just makes reloads and stuff like that really easy. They're quieter than the fanny pack style for the still hunting style that I, that I do of hunting, which is stalking through the woods. Um, and, and, and as an aside, most of the deer that I've shot in my life, and this is God's honest truth, most of the deer that I've shot in my life, I have stalked them. It, I wasn't standing there waiting for them to pass by or sitting in a tree. In fact, I never hunt out of tree stands, okay? Tree stands are not my thing. I don't like blinds or anything like that. I find them confining. And, and part of the reason I like to hunt and stuff like that is because I like to be in the woods, be out in the woods and walking around in the woods. So anything that kind of stops that from me is a method that I'm just not really fond of. 
and you know I like to be in the woods to the smells the sounds the sights and stuff like that and sitting in a, in a tree stand or a box stand and being immobile just not my thing so shell vests help me with you know stalking deer as well because they are quieter than wearing a fanny pack full of shells or cartridges and stuff like that because they have the the silenced holders in the shell vest um, and like I said, I wear gloves, I wear a hat, like a boonie style hat is my favorite. I wear a face mask. And if it gets too hot and stuff like that, I can easily just pull one of those items off and put it in one of these pockets of this, the shell vest and move on with my day. Um, and they just make it super convenient for that. So this, of all the hunting equipment that I own, all the hunting clothing that I own, I consider the field vest or the shell vest to be the most critical piece of equipment for me and it's the one piece of clothing when I go small game hunting or even deer hunting that I feel I cannot do without and I have in my <laughs> in my camo drawer I have like seven shell vests in there that I've used since the time I was a kid. I probably should have brought one out for the video here to show you because I actually do have the one that I used when I was like 10 or 11 years old. I still have that thing. Um, and it's just, when I see shell vest or field vest and stuff like that, this just says hunting season to me. <laughs> you know? This is what I equate with hunting season, a really nice shell vest. And this just happens to be one that I got for Christmas from my wife before she was my wife. Um, I gave her the specifications of what I was really looking for and what had happened was I had spent years of her when we first dated started dating I was still using like an older shell vest and it got to the point where it was like really faded out and stuff like that because it was just a cotton vest this one's synthetic which is superior um, and I was on the, on the look for like a new one and I had been looking for probably <laughs> three to four years and I kept seeing shell vests you know they were either real tree or like some other kind of generic camo that I didn't like or they had features on them that I didn't like or they lacked features that I wanted which was more critical point so she told me to sit down one day and write out what it was that I was looking for in a shell vest you know from the camo pattern to the design you know to where the shell holders were and all that kind of stuff and I did and I have no idea how she did it but she found it. <laughs> this thing is the perfect shell vest. I'm not kidding you guys. I, as soon as I got it, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> you know, this is awesome. Here's the game bag on the back that's removable and washable. You can see. So if you find squirrels, even though I'm not, the, I'm not too terribly fond, I'll be honest, of like shooting a rabbit or squirrel and throw them in the, in the back of the vest because then it bleeds all over your clothes. Um, you know, and it, it kind of gets on your back and shit like that so I'm not really fond of that so I don't really use that too much but you know the the shell vest or the field vest is probably the what I consider to be the single most important piece of your equipment when you're going small game hunting it stores your equipment stores extraneous items that you may need like gloves glasses hats you know and stuff like that you can put an extra small container of mosquito spray in there if you need to but most importantly the thing that's most important is it keeps your shells, your reloads, quiet and easily accessible for you to, to, to carry around. I can carry around a box and a half of extra shotgun shells in just in this vest alone. So an extra box and a half plus the three that my shotgun holds, since they're plugged because they're legal to hunt shotguns, but an extra shot, a box and a half of shotgun shells in here. Now I rarely do that. To be honest with you, these boxes of shotgun shells are 25 rounds. So I will take out the three that I need and put it in one of the pockets um, and then put the rest of the box in the shell vest because I rarely will shoot more than a box. And then when I get out to the field, I take my loose three shells, load my shotgun, and then I have my reloads ready to go already, wearing them and everything else ready to rock and roll. So that is one of the reasons why I consider a shell vest to be super important when you're out hunting. It's, it's the clothing item that I see and, and I have it hanging in my closet. So every time I open the door, it's on that side of the closet and I see this thing sitting there and I'm just like, oh, oh my God, I can't wait for hunting season. And it's literally one of those things that every time I go in my closet, I see and it just really starts me aching for that first weekend of squirrel season. So if you guys want to hear more of this kind of content, 
or if you want me to start doing some instructional videos on hunting and equipment and specifics of the kind of ammunition and, and you know, firearms that I use and why, just leave it down in the comments and stuff like that. Now, trust me, as much videos, as many videos as I can make about fishing, I can make twice as many on small game hunting because, um, yeah, it's like I said, it's something I've been doing for 41 years of my life. The only time I've ever missed hunting season was the first year after I had my first arm surgery and I couldn't physically hold a gun. So I missed that season because of that and it has broken my heart. It, it, my wife could tell you, I was, I, you know, I almost needed medication because I was so depressed about it. Um, but 41 years of my life I've spent in the woods every fall and winter and it's just, it's something that I just, I cannot see my life worth living without doing. So I feel that passionate about it. So honestly, I have tons of information that I could give and tons of advice and things like that that I can give regarding hunting, small game hunting, the equipment surrounding it, the ammunition surrounding it and things like that. So if you guys have any specific questions or anything like that, drop them down in the comments, please, because I can make tons of videos on this stuff that are really detailed and full of information that if you're a small game hunter or just getting into it or something like that, that I can probably guarantee you that I can give some information that would be helpful to you. So anyway, there'll be another video tomorrow. Um, we'll wait and see what this weather's gonna do. I hope the, I hope the cool weather promises are ring, come out to be true, and I will see you guys tomorrow. You go hang this bad boy back up in the closet and sit there and look at my other hunting stuff like an idiot because I'm just dying for it now. Thanks, thanks Louisiana Blackwater Fly Fishing. <laughs>